everyone, this is Sarah and welcome to my crochet channel. Today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make the Pamper Me Spa Set Washcloths. This is a set that has three sizes. The smallest size measures about five and a half inches and is the perfect size for taking off your makeup. The next size measures about six and a half inches and is the perfect size for washing the grime of the day off your face or maybe the grime of the night. <laughs> the last size measures about seven and a half inches and is perfect for washing your body or maybe your feet. Now each one of these has rows of nubs or bumps or baubles, whatever that you want to call them that work great for scrubbing off dirt, but also are gentle enough to be able to be used on your face. Now this is a free crochet pattern on my blog, and you can find that blog link down in the notes underneath this video. To make a set of these three washcloths, you're going to need about five ounces of 100% cotton yarn. This cotton yarn is the peaches and cream cotton yarn. You can use the I love this cotton or any cotton that you have on hand to make these washcloths. A neat thing about cotton is after you've washed your items, you always end up with a much softer and more absorbent cloth or whatever you're making with it. If you want to soften it up just a smidge, you can always put a couple of drops of white vinegar in the wash when you wash them. But you can toss these in with your regular towels and in the dryer and they will wash up just fine. This is what I have left of this particular color and so I'm going to go ahead and do the demonstration using this variegated white and blue. It's become one of my favorites for washcloths. We're going to be needing an eye hook today. The eye hook that I'm using is an I9, which is a 5.50 millimeter crochet hook. You'll need a needle for weaving in those ends when we're finished, and then of course you'll need a pair of scissors. I'm going to be making the smallest washcloth for my demonstration, but all three of the washcloths are made exactly the same. The only difference is they'll have more chains or more rows, and I'll give you those stitch counts. And remember, they're also in that link that's underneath the video. So we're going to begin with our slip knot. And then we're going to chain 16 chains if we're making the small size. If we're making the medium size, we're going to need to chain 20 chains. And if we're making the large, you'll need to chain 25 chains. Since I'm making the smallest size for my demonstration, I'm going to only chain 16 chains. So here is my 16 chains. I'm going to turn and I'm going to place one single crochet in the second chain from the hook. And this is done exactly the same if you're making the medium or the large. We're going to put our hook through that second chain, pull up a loop, yarn over and go through both of those loops. That's a single crochet. And we're going to place one single crochet in each chain across. And if you did 16, 20, or 25 chains, you'll do the same thing, one single crochet in each chain across.
we're going to chain one. If you chained 16, you will have 15 single crochets because we began in the second chain from the hook. If you chained 20, you'll have 19 single crochets. And if you chained 25, you'll have 24 single crochets because we began in the second chain from the hook. So we did our chain one and we're going to turn our work. We're going to place one single crochet in the first three single crochets. Our chain one does not count as a stitch, it's merely a turning chain. So we'll go in that first single crochet and stitch one, then we'll go in the next and then the next for three single crochets. Now, whether you're doing the small, medium, or large size, this is done the same. Three single crochets, then in the next single crochet we're going to stitch what's called a triple crochet. And we do that by putting two wraps on our hook, we go right in that single crochet, and pull up a loop. You'll have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, go through the first two, yarn over, go through the second two, yarn over and then go through that third two. And it'll be a really long stitch. But what happens is when we stitch our next single crochet, it pulls it down and makes it look like a bobble. So the next thing we're going to do is place one single crochet in the next three single crochets. So we'll push that sort of to the front and then we'll place one single crochet in the next three single crochets. Now look at it. See that bobble? That's what makes those little nubs so we have something to scrub with. So now we're going to repeat this across. So we're going to make another triple in the next single crochet. Then we'll sort of push that forward and we'll stitch one single crochet in the next three single crochets. One, two, whoops, <laughs> didn't grab my loop did I? All right, and then we're going to make another triple in the next stitch. There we go, and then we'll place one single crochet in those last three. There we go, and chain one and turn. And you can see on this, this is the smallest one, we have one, two, three bobbles. Now when we're doing the medium size, there'll be one, two, three, four rows of bobbles. And when we're doing the largest size, you'll have one, two, three, four, five rows of bobbles. So they're all stitched the same, they're just different sizes. So there's our row of bobbles. So then on the next row, we're just going to stitch a row of single crochets. And it can be a little confusing with the bobble, so make sure you're looking at the top of your row and making one single crochet in each single crochet across. There's our first three. Now we'll look at the top of our single or our triple crochet there. Make sure we go in that top there through those loops. There's our bobble. And we'll just stitch one single crochet in each of the stitches across. There we go. Now we're to our last triple, so we'll stitch in it. Chain one and turn. And before we turn, I just want you to look at it so you can see. We did a row of single crochets, then we did a row with the single crochets and the bobbles, and then we did a row of single crochet. And this is the way 
this pattern is going to work. You'll do a row of single crochets and then you'll do a row with the bobble stitches mixed in. So now we're going to repeat what we did on the bobble row. So we'll put one, two, three single crochets. Then we'll stitch a triple. Sort of push it to the front and then we'll stitch three single crochets, one in each of the next three stitches. Then we'll stitch a triple. Then three single crochets. Then we'll stitch a triple. And then one in each of the next three, which is our last three of this row. Three single crochets, chain one, and turn. So now we've done two rows of bobbles. And this is the way this will work. <coughs> and we'll do this over and over again. Row of single, row of singles with a bobble. Row of single, row of single with a bobble. And we'll do this until we have seven rows of bobbles with a single afterwards for the smallest size. In other words, for the smallest size, we'll go up through row 15. Now these are set sizes that I have made. If you want to make them different, you certainly can. So I'm going to continue stitching this until I reached row 15, alternating single crochets with the row of single crochets with bobbles. So now I'm just stitching a row of single crochets. There we go. Sometimes working with cotton, it does want to, I don't know if sticks the right word to use, but it does want to not move as smoothly as some of the acrylics do. All right, so now we're going to turn. We're going to put those three single crochets, one, two, Three, and then again we'll do a triple in the next single crochet. There we go. And three single crochets. One, two, three, and then a triple in the next. And then we'll stitch three single crochets. and a bobble in the next single crochet. And then one single crochet in those last three. All right, so now I have three repeats. And I wanna continue this until I reach R15. Single crochet, single crochet with a bobble. And then when we get to R15, I wanna make sure we have one row a single crochet and then I'll show you how to trim it off. So here's one that I have done. I have my 15 rows done. Here's my single crochet row and then bobbles and single crochets alternating rows and then I ended with that single crochet row. So this one is 15 rows and so now we're just going to make a single crochet trim around the edge. In order for the corners to lay nicely, we've got one right there in that corner, and so we're going to put two more single crochets right in that corner, and that just helps it ease around the corner and look nice. Now, when you single crochet evenly down the side of a row, it can be a little bit difficult to know where to put your stitches. So what I do is if I'm doing a project where I've done single crochets like this, I try to put one single crochet 
in the end of each row. And I try to go in the stitch, not the hole. There may be times, like right here, where I may need to put it in the hole, but I think that it lays better if we try to put it in the stitch opposed to the hole. And we'll just evenly single crochet down the side and you'll just look at it and eyeball it and make sure your stitches are close enough together. My ball of yarn in the basket over there. I have a little metal basket that I'm using for a yarn ball. It works great. There we go. So I'm just placing one single crochet in the end of each of the rows. And it's okay if you add an extra one here and there just to make it look full. The count doesn't matter here. What it looks like is what matters. So I'm going to work down to this next corner here. Try to get one right in there. <clears throat> there we go. And now I want to put three single crochets in this corner as well because I want it to go around the corner nicely so that my washcloth has a really nice look. So now I'm at the bottom. This is where our beginning chain was. And so I'll just put one single crochet in each of those chains nice and evenly. So they're close, but not too close. And there isn't too much space between. Learning to crochet around something that doesn't have specific stitches is something that's difficult for a lot of people who feel like they have to have a stitch. And so it's just something you have to practice and learn because we do stitch around lots of things because it gives it a nice finished edge. Alrighty. So we've worked along the bottom there. We got a nice edge and I'm to this corner so I'm going to put three single crochets in this corner so it moves around this side nicely and now I'm just going to work my way back up this side And like I said, sometimes you have to put it in the hole and sometimes you can get it in a stitch. Just work it up nicely, trying to find the best spot. There we go, almost back up there. Whoops, just trying to get in that stitch. There we go. All right, so we're back up to this corner and I'm gonna put two more in that stitch and then I'm going to join right in with a slip stitch. For that corner, I'm going to go ahead and cut my yarn. And then I'm going to go in this next stitch and I'm going to grab that loop and I'm going to pull it to the back. And then I can weave it into the back. <clears throat> there we go. Try to get that laying a little bit prettier. And that's how you do it. You just single crochet across and then single crochet all the way back around and join to the top there, making sure you put three single crochets in your corners so that it lays nicely around your corners. And the other two washcloths are done exactly the same, just with more chains at the beginning and more rows. And this makes a wonderful spa set for you or to give away as a gift. Thank you.